Hello students and welcome back to the next lesson in our AS Level Psychology course. Today we will be looking at reconstructive memory. So Loftus and Palmer, today we're going to be focusing on reconstructive memory and the most famous experiment um, to do with reconstructive memory is one conducted by Loftus and Palmer. These were two psychologists who tested to see if memory was fixed or if in fact it could be altered. They conducted an experiment to see if memory could be influenced by the type of questions asked. Now, um, Loftus, the psychologist, left a fantastic quote to do with this, saying, Memories are the sum of what people have thought, what they have been told, and what they believe. So there's a strong suspicion that memories, in fact, can be influenced and changed. So, what do they do? They played a video of two cars crashing into each other. After the video, they asked the participants who watched the video of the cars crashing, say, how fast were the cars going when they blank into each other? The blank was filled with a different verb, so it could say smashed, collided, hit, or contacted. As you can tell, some of the verbs vary in how aggressive they are. What did they find? That when they asked the participants with a more aggressive verb in the blank, they predicted that the cars were in fact moving faster. Also, afterwards they asked uh, if the participants saw any broken glass. In reality, there was no glass. However, there was a higher percentage of people that stated they did see smashed glass if they were given a more aggressive verb. So this shows that information in questions can influence people's memories. So this is called the reconstruction of memories. Now for the evaluation. We have a list of strengths and weaknesses for this uh, evaluation and the main strength is that the experiment as was very well controlled as it was a lab study. There are a few weaknesses though um, being sort of a lab study and having an invalid sample size because only university students were asked to participate. So as a result this is a problem from opportunity or uh, sampling or in fact, volunteer sampling, because this doesn't depict an accurate percentage of the population. So as a result, the results may be invalid. Also, you can't tell if memory was distorted or if the answers they gave were just down to demand characteristics, because the interviewer may have sort of influenced them to say something, not just to think something differently. Also, watching the video lacks mundane realism and has low ecological validity. So watching the video on a screen isn't anything like seeing a car crash in real life. So as a result, the results may be inaccurate because it isn't a clear representation of what really would happen in real life. So here we have some questions. First of all, I would like you to hide your notes and then hit pause to the video. Uh, try and answer these questions. And once you have done so, hit play to see how many you got right. So here are the answers. If you did get all three of them correct, congratulations. Move on to the next video to go aim for those grades that you want to get. However, if you did not, then I would advise you to rewind and just check over your notes to see if you did miss out and why it was so you can get it right next time. So this has been the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for watching as ever. Next lesson, we will be looking at the influence of anxiety on eyewitness testimony. And until then, I will see you next time.